from mysterious disappearances to massive explosions, here are seven of the worst submarine disasters. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to They Will Kill You, hit the like button and request any topics you'd like to learn about in the comments section below. Number 7. K-8 The K-8 was a nuclear-powered attack submarine that sank on April 12, 1970. During an exercise, fires broke out in two of the sub's compartments. They were caused by oil, which had come into contact with the air regeneration system. As the fire spread through the air conditioning systems, the nuclear reactors were shut down and the crew was ordered to abandon the ship. The order was countermanded when a towing vessel arrived. By that time, eight crew members had died in countermeasures to prevent flooding and the spreading of the fire. Seeing that help had arrived, 52 crewmen, including a commander, reboarded the surface submarine. In a tragic twist of fate, the submarine later sank in rough seas as it was being towed, killing everyone on board. As it sank in the Bay of Biscay, where it still lies at a depth of over 15,000 feet, four nuclear torpedoes remained on board. Number 6 K-19 Soviet nuclear attack submarine K-19 was destined to have a bad run ever since its christening when the champagne bottle didn't break. Despite the bad omen, it went to sea where the maritime superstition came true. In 1961, while the sub was in the Norwegian Sea, it had a problem with its nuclear reactor that kept heating up. Nine brave men ventured into Boa's mouth. This was the nickname for the sub's highly radioactive reactor compartment. For two hours, the nine volunteers were blasted with 100 times the lethal dose of radiation. Eventually, 22-year-old Chief Petty Officer Ivan Kulakov managed to save the sub by jury-rigging its cooling systems. Kulakov survived the incident with severe burns, but within weeks, the nine men that had entered the reactor compartment died of radiation poisoning. From that point on, the K-19 would be known to Soviet soldiers by the nickname Hiroshima. That wasn't the end for the unluckiest submarine in the Soviet Navy. In 1969, it collided with a US reconnaissance sub, and in 1972, a fire broke out, claiming the lives of 26 crew members. It would seem the K-19 had been claiming lives even before it ever went to sea as 10 people reportedly died during its construction. Number 5. K-278 Komsomolets The design of the 8,000-ton K-278 Komsomolets was highly advanced for its time. The inner hull of the nuclear-powered attack sub was made from titanium, which allowed it to go to greater depths than its U.S. counterparts. The Komsomolets could also carry a mix of cruise missiles and torpedoes along with nuclear warheads. On August 4, 1984, it dove to a record-breaking 3,350 feet. Five years later, tragedy struck when a fire broke out into one of the sub's engineering compartments. It triggered a sequence of malfunctions that eventually led to the sinking of the submarine in the barren sea. Only 27 out of the sub's crew of 69 survived the disaster. After the fire broke out, the Komsomolets was able to resurface for about five hours. An investigation revealed that only four people had died as a direct result of the fire and smoke. 34 had succumbed to hypothermia or drowned in the icy waters because help didn't arrive in time. The submarine currently rests about one mile deep in the Barren Sea with its nuclear reactor and two nuclear warheads still inside. Number 4. INS Dakar 69 crew members were on board the INS Dakar when it disappeared on January 25, 1968. Three other submarines were lost that same year. The USS Scorpion, the French submarine Minerva, and Soviet submarine K-129. 
they all perished under mysterious circumstances. The INS Dakar was a diesel electric submarine operating in the Israeli Navy. Despite extensive search efforts, the wreckage of the sub was located three decades after its disappearance. During that time, the Israeli government even offered a $300,000 reward for any information regarding the fate of the Dakar. Eventually, a joint US-Israeli search team found the submarine in 1999 on the seabed between Cyprus and Crete at a depth of 9,834 feet. Interestingly enough, Vice Admiral Abraham Botzer, commander of the Israeli Navy at the time, stated that the submarine sank due to technical or human malfunctioning two days before it was reported missing. Nobody knows what happened but apparently, as Dakar rapidly plunged through its crushed depth, no emergency measures were initiated. The emergency buoy was only released by the sheer force of the hull collapse. The Israeli government denied allegations of foul play from an Egyptian warship. One of the various conspiracy theories that emerged throughout the years claimed that the crew members were all actually alive and being held by Arab or Soviet forces. Number 3. USS Scorpion According to recent reports, the USS Scorpion rests on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean in around 9,800 feet of water, around 400 miles southwest of the Azores. It's the second nuclear sub lost by the US Navy, the first being USS Thresher. To make sure that no radioactive material seeps from the sub, the US Navy periodically performs radioactive testing on site. The cause behind the sinking of the Scorpion is still a mystery. Nobody knows for sure what happened after the submarine was declared presumed lost in June 1968. Later that year, it was found by a research ship. Various investigations by the US Navy into the loss of the submarine produced inconclusive results. The leading theory is the explosion of a torpedo inside the sub. Other theories include a hydrogen explosion during battery charge or even a Soviet attack. All of the Scorpion's 99 crewmen lost their lives in the incident. Number 2. USS Thresher On April 10, 1963, nuclear-powered attack submarine USS Thresher sank in the Atlantic Ocean, killing everyone on board as the submarine unexpectedly plunged to the seafloor about 300 miles off the coast of New England. It took 129 crew and civilians with it. It's the deadliest submarine disaster in history when it comes to direct loss of life. Launched from Portsmouth Naval Yard in April 1960, the Thresher was the crown jewel of the US Navy's submarine force. It was the first in a new class of submarines built with technology that enabled it to dive deeper and operate considerably quieter. On April 10, 1963, the submarine was conducting drills off the coast of Cape Cod. Around 9.30 a.m., another ship taking part in the drills, the USS Skylark, received communication from the Thresher, which said that the submarine was facing some minor problems. Efforts were made to re-establish communication but produced no results. Five minutes later, the Thresher appeared on sonar as it was breaking apart while falling to the ocean's floor. 17 civilians, 96 sailors, and 16 officers lost their lives. An investigation conducted following the incident revealed the cause. A leak in the engine room's silver braze joint had caused a short circuit, which led to the failure of critical electrical systems. From that point on, the submarine was gradually compromised and the equipment that would have allowed the crew to resurface it became inoperable. In the aftermath of the disaster, President John F. Kennedy ordered the flags be flown at half-mast across the country in memory of those lost. The incident brought about significant improvements in submarine design, safety, and quality control. Number 1. Kursk Submarine Disaster Built in 1994, the Kursk was an Oscar II-class submarine, the largest cruise missile submarine in the Russian Navy at the time. 
It sank to the bottom of the Barents Sea on August 12, 2000, prior to the incident. Kursk was performing a naval drill in the Arctic Circle. It was the first major Russian naval exercise in more than 10 years. The first signs of the Kursk submarine disaster occurred when nearby ships detected two explosions about two minutes apart. The second explosion was much more powerful than the first, and it was picked up by seismographs as far as Alaska. It took the Russian Navy 16 hours to find the Kursk wreckage. Over the next four days, the Navy attempted a rescue operation, but stormy weather, icy waters, and poor underwater visibility hindered their efforts. The government was criticized for its slow reaction to the incident, and the Russian Navy was subsequently considered to have been completely unprepared for such a disaster. On the fifth day, President Vladimir Putin accepted offers of assistance from Norway and Great Britain. An investigation revealed that as the crew was attempting to load a dummy torpedo, bad welding in the torpedo's casing had caused high-test peroxide to leak. This ignited the kerosene and caused an explosion. The intense fire resulting from the first blast triggered several torpedo warheads when the submarine hit the bottom. This produced the second explosion, which was equivalent to the detonation of two to three million tons of TNT. None of the 118 on board the Kursk survived. An alternative theory to the faulty welding was that the crew hadn't been trained in operating high-test peroxide torpedoes and had followed the loading procedures for a different torpedo type. Analysts looked at the salvage and concluded that 23 sailors had survived the two explosions and took refuge in the sub's small ninth compartment. Officer Dmitry Kolesnikov wrote a message during this time which read, 1545 is too dark to write, but I'll try by touch. It seems there's no chance, 10 to 20%. We hope that at least someone will read this as the survivors were attempting to change a volatile oxygen cartridge oily seawater that had seeped in produced a reaction which triggered an explosion. Several crew members were killed instantly and the flash fire consumed the oxygen in the compartment, leaving the others to suffocate. <laughs>